Good morning and hello or good afternoon for those of you where it's afternoon. This is Grace over here at the Comfy Nest on the Essential Stencil page. Getting ready to show you this really cool project. Paint is optional, so take that with you today that when stenciling, paint is always not required. Um, last week I showed you a great one, a great example of that. And this week I'm going to show you another one. It's a different take, a different twist on it. If you love to use napkins, you're going to love this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, if you're here, make sure you say hello. I see Cindy saying hello. Good morning, Cindy. And hello, Dee. And Teresa, hello, hello. Say hello because today there'll be three sets of stencils. They are going to be gifted today during the live um, taken randomly from the comments will be the winners so make sure you comment say hello hello miss kip she says it's rainy in new york hello andrea hello hello i see you who else somebody said coming in from pennsylvania oh dreary d says it's dreary in pennsylvania i know diane says i'm so glad that Glad you're back on. Me too. I'm so excited. Crafty chick in the house. There's Tracy Sipling. Hello, Miss Tracy. She says, I'm a crafty chick. Who else are crafty chicks who follow and like the Comfy Nest page, the YouTube channel, all the things? Um, oh, thank you for that support. She's sprinkling from PA. Yes, yes. Please do the sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle means to... Hold on, let me give him a little note. Haven't had to use this in a while. It means to do this. Um, Facebook doesn't like us to use that word, so we try not to say it. And in place of it, we say sprinkle. So thank you, Jana, for sprinkling. Thank you for um, Cindy, who sprinkled. And Tracy, of course. I've missed you too, Joy. She says, I've missed you so much. I did get my hair cut. Teresa, <laughs> it's funny that you say that. I got home. My one said, son said, oh, cute haircut. My other son said, I didn't even notice. And my husband said, do you like it? And I said, "It, you know, I just had it updated, you know, trimmed and all, um, more layers. But um, I actually got a little more cut off than I had anticipated. But if that happens, right, it'll grow back. It's okay. I told her as long as I can pull it up in a ponytail because I do that a lot of days. Thank you for noticing. Hey, another crafty chick in the house. Debbie's here. Oh, and Candy is here. Thank you for saying hello, ladies. It means so much to me to know that the Comfy Nest followers come on over to Essential Stencil when I'm here to, um, to say hello and to watch and to learn and to hang out. Hello, Miss Donna in Pittsburgh. Hello, Sharon. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hold on. I got to grab the comments here up on the on the um, iPad because then I can put that camera down and you can see what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using this set. It has been around for a while. It's a wonderful set. These are 12 by 12. Um, oh, and I just smudged my writing. I used a permanent marker. It hadn't dried yet, but I'll show you this in a second. I really do need to just make sure I can get the feed. Um, on my iPad so I can, there it is, so I can get the comments over here. Here we go, the water's a crafty chick, crafty chick's in the house. <laughs> Cold and munchy and Anna says, and crafty chick with goosebumps. Oh goodness, who said that? <laughs> Somebody said that. Oh, I missed who said it. Well, good morning, good morning. Hi, Maggie and Sharon. Thank you for sprinkling. And Delia. Cloudy in Iowa. It's cloudy here too. And we got snow the other day. Did you see my story on my personal page? I posted a picture. Oh, and I texted it out to all my text followers. Like, can you believe it? Um, everybody who's on my text service. I, I do some behind the scenes stuff on my text stuff. So you get to see a little family life and the wonkiness that is the Kurtz family um, <laughs> through the texting. So I sent that out this morning and said, look what's on my back deck. Snow. Yuck. Thank you, Tammy Burkle. She says, it's so nice to see your face again. Thank you. Hearts back to you. Hearts, hearts. Hello, Jessica. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I have the six by six set that I used last night after my live show. Which set, my dear? You mean um, the farm to table? There's like another mini set of farm ones. Um, hello in Long Island, Miss Kelly. Okay, okay. This is what I'm going to use today. This set. I'm just going to use one of them from the set, but this is what you get. This is what it looks like. Mine's really old. I tried to write in the name of it because it wasn't on my original packaging. 
it was the it's called the farmhouse sign stencil set so if you they're 12 inches so they're the bigger ones and if you want to go grab it please use my code the comfy nest i would so greatly appreciate it not only do you get a great discount but it also supports my business so thank you for that hello jill in washington state staying here with her brand oh she's in colorado staying with her brand new granddaughter well many blessings congratulations that's a great thing to be celebrating all right so here's what you get in this set if you choose to grab it you get this farm sweet farm you get farm to table you can see well used well used um let me grab the ones on the inside you get this set of animals how cute are those stacked? And of course you can use them individually. And then you get the big chicken. And this is what I'm gonna use today. You guys, the cuteness of this project is on overload. It's cuteness overload, seriously. I'm gonna put this aside because it's gonna be in my way and we're gonna get started. Um, today, I'm gonna be using watercolor paper. I don't know if you don't know what that is. Um, I grabbed this big stack because it was on sale um, and um, it's huge. So I can either cut it down into smaller sizes or have the big one if I need it. And for this project, because the chicken is so large, I couldn't fit this on a regular, I couldn't fit this on a regular nine by 12 piece of watercolor paper. So I needed my big, my big pack so I could cut it down. You guys, I, oh, sorry for the noise. I got it either from like, you're going to ask. I probably got it off Michael's Hobby Lobby or Amazon. Like those are the places I shop. So you can check any of those out. So we're going to use that um, because we are going to decoupage a napkin. So that's the first step we're going to do. Um, I have some really fabulous napkins in my napkin bundles on my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com. And I am, for you, those of you that are the crafty chicks, I will just say really quickly, there was a request for a napkin bundle, like a monthly subscription, and it's in the works. So I am hoping and planning to have a quarterly. Um, you can just make sure you get over into... Um, my website, that's what I would do if you're interested. Go to the website and just get on my email list because my email list will get notification when that has happened. So you can get an invitation if you're interested. Hello, Miss Amanda. So if you love working with napkins, I have had napkin bundles on my website for a long time. This one has been going out in the um, variety pack, um, but I'm gonna show you some others. And I'm gonna use this today. We're gonna decoupage this onto the watercolor paper and then we're going to use that for our project so you have to separate your napkins before you use them and actually i'm only going to get to use half this napkin these napkins <laughs> i actually grabbed from walmart and what i just love the print on them and what's really fun is they come with recipes on the inside we're not using the recipes you could but we're not going to do that i'm just going to cut really quickly let me grab a bigger scissor and um, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Tell me if you are a napkin lover. Um, and what I mean by that, for your crafting and creating. Um, tell me, please comment. Do you use napkins? Have you tried it? Do you like it? Um, who does it regularly? Who's tried it once and hasn't gone back? I'd love to know all the deets. So please let me know. Yes, this is a Pioneer Woman napkin and it is such a beautiful, Look at the detail. Look at the detail. We're going to do our chicken with this, you guys. We are, we're doing it, man. So here's what we're going to do. Let me get this camera down. Thank you, Charlotte, for sprinkling. Thank you, thank you. I've got something in the way of the camera there. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. So now I cut out a piece of that watercolor paper of the appropriate size. I just grabbed my chicken, put it on the watercolor paper, and if I cover this whole paper, it's going to cover, um, it's going to fill in what I need for my chicken. And actually... If I go down to the bottom here, the top of my chicken head is the tallest point of this project. And so I'm gonna mark under here, like my napkin only needs to go to that point. That's just my own mental note because look it, my napkin isn't quite big enough to fill my chicken. So we're gonna, we're gonna piece it all together. Let's see, I like this side here, the bottom. I already kind of tested this out. So I've got the bottom here right? And actually, I was thinking I would use a marker for the feet, but look at, look at, look at how pretty the 
that's going to be. So all I'm missing really is this tiny little smidge of the tail and the head, and I'm going to be able to piece that together from what I have here. So first things first, we got to get this napkin down. Um, I don't need the whole thing. I only need to here. So I'm going to make a little mark for myself with a pencil, and then I'm going to cut this because I only need this much to decoupage. I try to do as little work as possible, you guys. I wanna see your comments. I wanna see who uses napkins. Someone, um, one of the other brand ambassadors told me, um, I have another project that I did a long while ago. You'll find it in the, the playlist here um, and probably on my YouTube channel under the Essential Stencil playlist. Um, someone said, oh, they call you the napkin lady over at Essential Stencil. <laughs> Hi, Dion. She says, I'm happy to see you again. Well, I'm so happy to see you. Good morning, Miss Jennifer Russo. Cindy loves working with napkins, and so does Judy. She's used them on different holiday projects. Yeah, they're great for making ornaments, right? I used to decoupage napkins on clear glass plates for decorations. Oh, Kathy, that sounds interesting. Just did a butterfly napkin, Rhonda says. It worked out great. Awesome. Okay, so we need to get this down. I think I'm going to just use a marker, or you could use paint. I told you this, this could be a paint-free project. Um, so a marker would always work. I think I'm going to leave the feet off and not make it this same, um, this same thing, like kind of like I did with the little chick, the same design. So all I need to do is get this decoupage down. So I'm just using, the only reason I'm using this up, I have this antique colored decoupage medium from Americana. You, you can use any decoupage medium that you have and love, okay? Mod Podge is probably the most frequently used and seen, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm gonna move this over so you can see. I'm gonna start smearing on. Now listen, this is what's gonna happen. This is a paper. The reason I picked watercolor paper, you guys, is because it's, it's really like a thick cardstock. Um, it's for using with watercolor paints. Um, the, it's, 140 pound okay when you buy mixed media paper or sketch paper or any tracer paper each one of those papers is thinner and thinner this is the thickest one that i found it's 140 um through the general hobby stores you probably could go to the art stores like jerry's autorama and get the even thicker stuff um you can watercolor paper but i just bought the the thickest one at the hobby stores um, which is this 140 pound because I'm going to smear it with all this moisture. It's going to bend It's going to bend a little but it's not a problem um, What you do is you can just when it's all dry Stick it in a book or stick it in something um, or put something heavy on top of it That's flat and it will flatten out for you. It's really not a problem But I am you're gonna see it's gonna curl up on me, but I promise you we can work around that. We're not gonna let that stop us or get us down. So I'm smearing a lot of this on here. See, kind of thick. Um, I don't want bubbles and ridges, but I do want a good thick coat of it. Um, I'm gonna start placing the napkin down. You can see it's starting to curl a little bit. I'm gonna start placing the napkin down on the bottom here. And you do have a little bit of time. Once you get it down, the napkin, of course, is very fragile. You have a little bit of time if you misplace it or you don't like the placement to pull it up with most decoupage mediums and put it back down. Look at my nice curl there. Um, I'm just going to put it down. I'm just going to take my hands. Now, be very careful what you use if you've never used napkins before. I do a lot of napkin demos, and I do them a little bit differently every time. See, I've got a big bubble right there that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to use my finger and gently push it into the glue, the glue will come through the napkin. So you'll get a bit of glue on your fingers. So what I was gonna say is you push down. If your finger gets wet, glistening wet, don't put it back down on your napkin because it will pull your napkin up. Um, you don't wanna tear your napkin. Um, so it really just depends on your decoupage medium, how wet it is. It depends on how you're applying it. You can use a brayer. You can use a brayer to push it down, but remember that glue, it can come up onto your brayer. The napkin is so thin that your decoupage medium is gonna seep through the napkin and over to the other side. So when you push, just make sure that when you're, if you're reapplying that, if you're gonna go down for another roll, 
that you check. I know how wet this is because I'm right here and I can feel it's, it's, there's a bit of moisture coming through, but it's not wet on my hands. So I'm not worried about the brayer. Um, I push it down. You can use your brayer. A lot of times I'll use a brush. So not the brush. So what you might want to do is take a different brush. I usually take a really gnarly one, a big fat gnarly one like that, that has bristles that are all brushed out and wide. Um, you can take that and you can push your napkin by pouncing your brush into the glue. Okay. So you want to get it down and get that under layer of glue to dry and then you can go ahead on top of this and put another layer. Now you can see I've missed a bunch of spots here. The, I think the glue dried before I got to it or whatever. So I'm just gonna come in with a nice thick, maybe too thick right there, it's okay, layer. And I'm gonna push this back down. Now I can take the dry brush and push that in. I, you should get, you guys, it's nearly impossible to avoid, oh, and I just ripped my, I just ripped my napkin, you guys. It's nearly impossible to avoid um, wrinkles this way. If you wanted to avoid wrinkles, you would need to use your, your iron or your heat press. Probably an iron is better. I want to show you what I did. I ripped it right there. Can you see? The napkin is torn. Now, you guys, I don't get worked up about this stuff, but if you wanted to fix it, you would try to push it back together. I'm just going to leave it because I don't want to make it worse than it already is. I'm just going to leave it. And that doesn't bother me because most of my projects, I kind of make them scruffy and scrappy. So don't, like, don't worry about it, okay? Oh, gosh, you guys. Um, Okay, I asked Essential Sinful about this yesterday. I think this is new, or at least newer to me. The If you hit so many um, live viewers by sprinkling that they'll give another set of stencils away. And you can see in the comments there, congrats, you did it. We reached the goal. I don't know, I'm assuming the goal was 250, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Stick around. Um, and they said they'll choose four winners from the comments. So say hello if you haven't yet. Thank you, Becky. She said super cute. Um, Not so there. Um, it's watercolor paper in a scale. Okay, I need to get the rest of this down. Now, I like to kind of make sure that this is kind of dry before I go in with the top coat. Um, so you can take your hair dryer, your heating tool, whatever you have to make sure that it's, because we've got it down and then we want to seal it because it's a napkin. You don't want it to gather dust and to take on anything. Well, maybe you do. I guess it really just depends on how many layers of this. Um, on your project. For this project today, it's just the napkin layer on top of the watercolor paper. So I'm gonna seal it before I cut it. Now listen, remember, we're not doing the feet. We're gonna put our chicken here, but I'm missing these little bits. <laughs> like, look it, they're the littlest bits. If the chicken is sitting right there on my paper, I'm just missing like the top of the head and just this tiny little bit of the tail. There's like a quarter of an inch of the tail that I'm missing. So here's what we can do. We're gonna take our leftover napkin and we can, let's get our chicken down again. And remember when, when it's not a word, you guys, something like this, I love the placement of the florals down here with the buffalo plaid up there. You can just flip your chicken if you want the positioning of the design to be a different way or if you want your chicken face in a different way. Remember, you can always flip. That's another tip for you that you can flip if you want. Now, I just need to fill in the head and the tail. So all I'm gonna do is try to find, this is all red, so I just need an all red section of napkin, which I found this little square right here. So I'm gonna cut this out and try to match it up. I'm okay with that. Like if I put this here, I'll be filling in what's missing. Do you see? If you want it to be blue, do it blue. Like it's totally up to you here. If I try to match up my pattern of what's going on here, this one, Let's see, think, 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 Grace. This one would be more blue, so I need this little corner of blue. 
See how easy this is? And when you're decoupaging napkins, they're so incredibly thin that um, this over layering of the napkins on top of each other, it's not gonna be noticeable to people looking at your project when it's done. I know you, because you did the project, you are gonna see, you're gonna see it and say, oh, I can see my line where, the, where I connected those together, but I can pretty much promise you that nobody else is gonna see that. So see, I'm just gonna fill them in. I am gonna grab my brush, my brush is too big for the jar, the lid. I don't wanna lose my placement here, so I'm gonna carefully, they're sticking to the, um, the static is causing them to stick to my chicken. This one I know exactly where it needs to go, so I'm just gonna over layer, I'm layering over the top. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in. I'm putting the glue over the top of the napkin that's already down, and then I'm gonna put this square right on top and match that very gently glue that down okay on this side I decided to make it all red so this is gonna go here I want to take this little blue part off this is all gonna be red so I'm gonna same thing a little bit of glue I'm gonna overlap I'm gonna put it on top of I'm gonna put this little red square on top of this red square to overlap them glue them down. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of glue used here, so that was really easy for me to take that wet brush and go over the dry napkin and to get it to stick down. Now, I want, I definitely want to seal this all in before I start cutting anything. So, I'm going to take my glue again, which can be used as your sealer, and we're just going to make sure that this stays down. Number one, and number two, that we're sealing the napkin so that it doesn't like take on dust. Just, you know, depends on where your project's going to be. If it's going to be behind glass, this probably won't even be that important. Um, but if it's going to be anywhere that, like, dirty fingers could touch it and get, like, you know, grease or oil or something from your fingers onto the napkin, you want to wipe them because the napkin is meant to absorb things. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're wiping it over with your sealer. Your glue, the same glue, can also be your sealer. Um, you know, all decoupage mediums pretty much work that way. So let's get this on here. This needs to dry. I know it looks incredibly funky, number one. And my sister-in-law always says it's, it's going to be ugly before it's pretty. <laughs> and I think she's right for a lot of projects. So you just got to go with the process and follow through. Let me check comments real quick and see what everybody's saying, see if there's any questions. Why didn't I use a full strip to the top? Because I don't need the top done. I just need this section, Kip. Um, let's see, any other questions? Kathy loves crafting with napkins, yay! Yes, and Denise says, I love that you show problem solving tips. Why not, right? We run into problems, I run into problems all the time. I make mistakes all the time. I'm a messy crafter. I'm a, I, what I would say is I'm a carefree crafter and it has taken a lot of work. Um, <laughs> in my craft therapy club, my monthly club membership, one of them, um, and in the other one too, my craft crate, I, I, we get, we get together live every month and we craft together and I encourage those ladies, I encourage all of you to like really let go of perfectionism if you can, let go of linear thinking let your creativity flow and let go of this idea that that it needs to be perfect because we're not trying to win awards. It's not going to be entered into a museum somewhere. It's for your enjoyment or you're giving it as a gift. You're lovingly making something as a gift for somebody else. It's meant to be enjoyed and it's handmade and there's beauty to that. Um, the flaws are all good. It's okay. It's okay. We do not need to be that precise. So I really would encourage you to just have fun with your creating and crafting. If you are not a professional, if you're not earning income from your creations, for sure, just have fun with it, right? Have fun with it. If you are a sign maker and you're earning income, you're going to be, you're going to need to be more precise, right? Um, but little, little mistakes, there's always ways, especially with paint, there's almost always a way to fix. So just relax and enjoy it. Um, let's see. Let it be what it wants to be. Carrie, I love that phrase. I love that. I love it. Okay. This is a great napkin for 4th of July. Yes, 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 Tina. I totally agree with you. Okay, so 
here's what we're doing here. If this is still wet, so I don't necessarily want to put my stencil here, but I'm going to cut this out in a few minutes. This needs to dry. I want to show you a couple of things. Um, you don't even know how I'm going to use this yet. I haven't showed you. I kind of wanted to wait and reveal that to you toward the end. That'll um, make sure that you all stick around so that you can see that. Uh, my page is called The Comfy Nest with Graced Genie. And you can go to my YouTube channel as well. Handmade with Love. Yes, Nora. I want to show you two others that I've already made um, with other napkins that I have. So this is one of the napkins in um, my, I think it's in the floral bundle. You'd have to look. I have quite a few bundles of napkins on my website. But I love this napkin because um, it has four panels that are not identical. Okay. Uh, when you open a napkin up, you saw with the floor, this one, that it had recipes on one side. Um, it's kind of the fun of getting napkin bundles is you don't know what you're going to get when you open it on the inside. For my bundles, I work pretty hard to, to um, curate and find napkins that are, number one, really high quality. Pa like the really thin, cheap napkins are harder to work with with crafting. So I look for high quality and I look for ones that have four decorative panels. And I love this one because they're four different decorative panels. So on this one, I did the chicken and I did not need, because I was able to get my floral down, I did not need to piece anything together. My chicken um, went really well. Um, I was able to like cut out the whole chicken with all these florals. Now I want to show you something. If I choose to use the the cardstock, which I did, behind my chicken with a white napkin. Do you see how bright and beautiful that chicken would be when I create that? But maybe that's too bright for you. So what I did, I, you know, I wanted to do something different. I used this napkin, but I, I grabbed a paper pack, a farmhouse paper pack that I got. Um, I don't know. Where did I get it? Hobby Lobby or Michaels, one of the two. And I grabbed this paper out and I did my napkin on that paper. So now you can see how behind that white napkin is showing this awesome green buffalo plaid paper. See how cool that is, you guys? So I bundled, um, I, I layered them. They are on the watercolor paper. So the first thing I, or um, on this scrapbook paper. So this scrapbook paper, it's not cardstock, but I use the scrapbook paper, I decoupage the napkin on top, and then I cut out my chicken. Do you see how cute that is, you guys? And how fun that would be to use? Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. And Jennifer says, very inventive. Oh, I'm so glad you think so. I gotta check comments really quick. My napkin bundles are on the comfynestwithgrace.com. There are a variety of napkin bundles, Cindy. So the, I, to give you a price, I can't. I mean, you would go and there's like probably a half a dozen bundles there. Um, so here, I'm going to show you another one. This one, I use um, a plain check, blue check napkin. See that? And this one, I did include the feet. Look at how cute this is, you guys. And you know what I put this on? You're gonna freak out. Now listen, Crafty Chicks, where are my Crafty Chicks again? Who all gave me a shout out. If you're following Grace, <laughs> following me over at the Comfy Nest with Grace, if you're in my monthly membership clubs, um, if you're in the Crafty Chicks Club, you know how I love to use things that we already have on hand, right? So do you wanna see? I, I did the napkin on watercolor paper. And then I used my tacky glue and I used my Amazon envelope so that this chicken, she's puffy, <laughs> she's puffy and crinkly. So you're getting texture, you're getting some visual interest because she's going to pop off your project like this. I, um, distress the edges with my distress ink. In fact, I use my little foam dauber. Um, my craft crate people got these last month with some distress ink in their in their um, kits. But I distress this up, like all over the chicken just to make it look all mucked up. I distress the edges and then, 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 I took this little thing. It's just like a little edge shredder. <laughs> edge distressor it's called. 
Listen, I think you could use your mail opener. You know those mail openers that you open your envelopes with? I took this and I went along the edges of this and it makes it look kind of furry. If you look really close, it makes it look kind of feathery and furry. So there are so many ways, you guys, that you can use your tools that are in your stash to make super cute creations with your stencils. So no paint needed yet, right? This, you could do it with the feet. You saw, where's my other floral? This one, the floral, we got the cardstock paper and then the napkin on top without the feet, right? So you can go back to your stencil. This one I'm doing without the feet. Wait, not that guy. This one we're doing without the feet. I need to take the hairdryer to it for a second. So I'm gonna do that and I would love to get some of your reactions. <laughs> Cecilia says, who would have thunk it, right? Tell me, can you see yourself using your packaging, your bubble packaging that comes from Amazon or wherever you're ordering from, gosh, save a little bit of it. Save snippets of it. I have such good ideas for, um, we, we've used this in other ways um, in the Craft Therapy Club, but let me take the hair dryer to this. You guys keep commenting. Um, if you haven't commented yet, make sure you do. They're choosing four winners today live one winner will be a replay winner so if you're catching the replay make sure that you comment because they'll choose another winner to give another set to susan says the sky's the limit yes it is thank you miss jean Jeannie or jean cindy says i want one of those one of what oh one of these little distressors i you guys I have had this for so long, I have no idea where I got it. But I think you could use anything that has a sharp edge to it. Really, your exacto knife? Probably. Essential Stencil has put the link to this stencil set up. Um, so if you wanna grab this set, go for it. Go grab the set. I would highly recommend it. It's really fun because it has, you know, it has the two sets of words farm to table, farm sweet farm, but then you get the four animals. So you get the chicken and then you get these stackable animals. And how cute would these all be with different, like a buffalo plaid, a floral, and another buffalo plaid. Oh my gosh, I see another project in the works with that. The animals are darling, you guys. If you don't have this set, you might wanna grab it. You might wanna grab it. Okay, here is my paper with my napkin on it. I'm loving this. I'm gonna to try to get as much of this floral in, but I need to make sure that I got the head and the tail. I'm putting it all the way to the bottom because the feet, we're gonna do something else for the feet. So I'm not worried about the feet. I just need to cut out. Do we, do we, do we get the mark here? Let me, let me get it repositioned. Ooh, I might've missed one, one or two little, wait, did I, did I do it too far over? If this is here, I think I did it too high. There we go. Now I got it all. I'm pretty sure I got it all. We're gonna go this way a tish. Yes, I'm liking it. <laughs> so you just wanna line it up. Okay, that's all I needed was to cover these parts that were really, really white over here. Okay, now, how do we cut it out? So what I did um, when I did the two practice ones, I used a marker, where did I put it? I thought I had it right here. Hold on, girls. I used a marker to outline it so that I knew where to cut it out. And girls, oh, I can't find it now. Here it is. It's really dark though. Um, so if the dark lines bother you, use a pencil, but it has to be dark enough so that you can see it. I'm gonna use this again because it's really dark. That will help you see it better. And then I'll show you how you can, um, you can cover it up a little bit. Someone said, what is this stencil set called? Um, the link to it is, is in the comments from Essential Stencil, but it's called the Farmhouse Stencil Set. It's, there's, it's the big one, because they're 12 by 12, the Farmhouse Sign Stencil. Farmhouse Sign Stencil. So if you go onto the website and you're looking it up by words, you're gonna do Farmhouse Sign Stencil. It does look patriotic, Robin, I think so too. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come around, it has all these great details. I'm gonna do it in the black marker because I want you to be able to see it. We are gonna outline this. You guys know I'm the napkin chick, right? <laughs> Someone calls me the, um, the queen of napkins because I love to use all these gorgeous decorative napkins. 
in my projects. And you guys, I ordered another slew, like huge order today of new napkins coming in that will probably end up as part of the first month for my new subscription, which will be the napkin bundles. Okay, I do napkin bundles on my website, but I think I'm gonna be doing the subscription by your request, the other crafty chicks. Okay, look at, so see my chicken? And look at, that's where it's ripped, but it's kind of funny. It's right at the neckline, which is kind of funny because I can totally fix that, make it workable. Like we're gonna distress this when we're done. The distressing will cover up your black lines a little bit. Um, it'll also, I love the distressed look. I'm a huge, if you're a fan of distressed, show me some hearts. Show me hearts. Tina, you can get napkins on my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com. Now, I'll tell you, this paper was a lot easier to cut than this, um, my, my Amazon bag. <laughs> oh, look at all those hearts. Look at all the hearts, I love it. You can minimize your black marker cut um, or your black marker. You can minimize the look of that black marker by making sure that you cut on the inside cut off most of the black, okay? So that what's left is not very black. Your chicken will be a, just a tish smaller, but you can see my black marker line makes it easy for my old eyes. It makes it easy for my old eyes to see so I can cut. That's really important to me. Like look at the head, how it has all those jagged lines for the head. So just another tip, if you wanna like make that disappear totally, just cut on the inside of that black marker. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you how distressing the edges is gonna mask some of that a little bit. Now, when you get to the little cuts, the little scissors are great. Big cuts, it's so much faster and easier if you have a bigger blade, because you can make the progress is a lot faster. And this is not that hard to cut out, you guys. It has this, um, I don't like all this stuff hanging on my project while I'm trying to cut. It has all those little ridges. So I'm gonna skip that for now and just do all the big stuff with my big scissors. And I'm gonna to try to do it quickly for the, your sake, for your time. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be respectful of your time. I'm gonna to try to do it rather quickly, trying to avoid or trying to like get rid of the black mark a little bit. But if you have that black mark, distressing the edges is really gonna help take care of and get rid of that. The big scissors are just easy for bigger cuts. And then when we get to the small cuts up here, I'm gonna go back to my little scissors because it's just easier on your hand. Yeah, old eyes, Carol's laughing at me. <laughs> Cecilia says, love all your great tips. I'm so glad you love them. This is what it's like to hang out with Grace <laughs> every month. Hang out over, um, I come here every week on Thursdays. Thankfully, I'm back. Thankfully, thankfully, I'm working with Facebook now again to try to secure my business page. Uh, my business page was um, hacked and someone took over my business page and they are working on getting it reinstated right now. Thank the Lord. Um, so it has been a couple of months and that has been really hard. But if you want to come over, like the page, go ahead and like and follow the page. I'm hoping and praying that I will have full access to it again here in the next few days. That's my goal, that's my hope. Okay, so you can see on the bottom, I did a really good job of getting rid of that black line, but on the top, not so much. See that? Maybe you like the black line. Maybe you like it, leave it on. If you don't like it, cut it off. <laughs> it, there, there's, um, you know, like I always say, you do you. Like maybe the black line is, is like your fave, then you keep it, keep your black line. If you wanna cut it off, just cut it off. But you see how this little bit of black line that's on the tail, it just, to me, looks like distressing. So I wouldn't even worry a whole lot about that if you are a distressor, which you can see, I love to distress. So reuse, reduce, recycle. I'm gonna use my envelope again. I used it earlier on the other chicken. I'm gonna grab my distress ink and my little dauber here. There are all kinds that you can use, these little daubers, but I have this little handy one. Wait, let me cover up my glue because I don't wanna knock it over. That would be something I would do. Now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna come along my edges and add some mucking up of this chicken's. She's really bright. She's really bright. 
because she's on white cardstock, but I really like the distressed look. I like it to look mucked up and like tea dyed or I don't know, coffee dyed kind of paper. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go around all the edges, of course. Now, if you want your edges to kind of look like burnt edges, the black marker is gonna help a little bit with that. It's got that look already, but you can come in with your, your applicator and just hit the edges like that with the ink. And then, then you're not hitting your, like in the inside of your napkin with the brown, but I like the brown. Um, these, these Distress Ink pads come in many, many colors. That's the one I'm using, it's called Vintage Photo, but I'm just gonna come in and quickly muck her up because then we're gonna put her on the board that I intended to use. So now you can see where I've distressed the edges and this is really bright white in here. I don't like the bright white. I'm gonna, I wanna muck it up. And by hitting it with the Distress tool, it actually highlights all the little wrinkles, which I love, you guys, I love the wrinkles. Look at my mistake right here. We're gonna muck that up. She looks cracked and old and decrepit like me. <laughs> I say that, I'm not trying to like, I just like to laugh, you guys. So when I say she looks cracked and old and decrepit like me, I'm not trying to be mean to myself. I just think it's funny. Okay, so I mucked her all up, not everywhere, but a lot of places. If I wanted to, I could take that tool, that distress tool, and you can like distress her back. You know, so we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna like chop up that paper a little bit. It kind of shreds it. And so it makes it look a little fluffy. <laughs> so it looks like she kind of has feathers. I don't have the patience to do the whole thing, so I'm not gonna do that. Partially for your time, partially because I don't have the patience. I do too. Tracy says I love anything vintage looking. Debbie loves distressing. Me too. Me too, I love it too. I'm glad you guys are laughing at me, <laughs> Tina. Old and decrepit, just like me. <laughs> yeah, Sherry, I muck everything up. She says, I love that phrase, muck it up. I muck the things up. I'm mucking it up. Okay, here, hold on, I don't want to forget this. I will show you that in a minute. But um, here, here's where it can come together because you can mount this on anything that you want. Now, if your chicken, <laughs> if your chicken on your paper is too thin for you, then you could use cardboard. You saw me use the bubble wrap to make her kind of fluffy. And I love this because it's crinkly. It reminds me of those kids' books that they open the pages and one page is furry, one page has sandpaper, one page has like bubble wrap and you touch it and you get the sound. And if you're like a really, uh, what's the word? Is it kinesthetic learner? Like if you're, if you're a person who loves to use all their senses, this is so fun. It's so fun. So if you want it to be a little thicker, think out of the box. Think, use a cereal box as decoupage on the cereal box or decoupage on cardboard. You can paint the cardboard and then decoupage on it. Um, all, I have all kinds of ideas, girls. I got all kinds of ideas. So I got my three chickens. Two of them don't have feet. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how you can solve that. Here's the board I'm gonna use. It's just from SPC. I got it from Crafts Direct in Minnesota, but you can get these, like Walmart has these boards. Like almost every hobby store has these boards, right? Um, so we're gonna put it on here because it looks real farmhousey, and it's white. It's got a white background. Now look at, look at the difference between, so look at her. So cute, you guys, right? Paint not required. So cute. So we got her, the floral. I love her. I love her. Um, here is my one that's on my bubble wrap. And you're just going to find, I'm going to use tacky glue, but you can use your favorite glue. You could use your hot glue gun, although I would not use hot glue gun on this plastic because the hot glue, unless you use the low temperature, um, but that gives you, look at that, it's going to be raised up and bubbly, which I think is so fun. Um, gosh, I see putting a little lace around her neck, maybe a bow somewhere. There are just so many things. And with this one, because it's plain, you could put florals somewhere on here, like little flowers around her neck or lace or something. Um, this is the one I intended to use. And here's what we're going to do for the feet, because I did see someone say, what are you going to do with her feet? Actually... Maybe I like this one better. I like this one better. <laughs> I like this one better. So you're gonna figure out where she's gonna go. You can even glue her down. And then we're going to either 
we're gonna overlay and we're either gonna paint or I'm gonna use marker just to show you it can be done. So let's get her stuck on down here. Again, I'm just gonna use my tacky glue just because I can and it's fun and easy. Janet says, distressing looks great. Debbie loves distressing. I know, Susan, I am so silly. I, you know, I don't see, I don't see why we can't be fun and have so much fun when we're crafting, right? Thank you, Jackie. She says it's fun to see. Yes, and someone said it looks 3D. Yes, right? This one? You got your 3D going on. Use what you got on hand, ladies. Use it. Use it or lose it, as they say. Okay, I'm going to put, I usually push the tip of the glue down to kind of flatten out the bead so that it kind of spreads. Um, you can use a brush. I am not that finicky or picky. I just want to make sure I hit the edges especially first. This glue will stay wet long enough, unlike a glue gun. <laughs> this will stay wet long enough for me to fussy glue the whole, all of the edges here because it has a lot of little nooks and crannies on the edge. Um, you know, if you were using a glue gun, this would be cool before you got to this end. Uh, tacky glue, you don't have to worry about that. A lot of these craft glues. I'm going to come in the middle, and I don't mean to be, but I'm kind of adding a pretty little design here in the middle. kind of looks like a cookie with frosting on it. <laughs> Who wants a cookie? See, I just put a bunch of glue. I don't feel the need to spread it all. You can if you want to. I don't, it doesn't, I'm going to use my brayer to get this stuck down on here. I'm going to position her kind of in the middle and then I'm going to take my little brayer and I'm going to push from the middle. I'm going to push out. Let's make sure before I push down too hard. Yep. I have plenty of room for her feet and I'm going to push. And what's going to happen is the glue may ooze out the edges and that's the time you want to come in and grab that glue and get rid of it. It actually would be good to have like a little wet. Um, this is just a huggy wipe. That, that would work really well. Mine has dried out a little bit, so I'm gonna wet this tip. And then any of the glue that oozes out from your brayer, yep, here we have some more. I'm just gonna come around and wipe it off. I don't See, it's on my brayer, the glue. It's okay to have the excess glue. You'd rather have enough glue than not enough, but pushing from the out, from the inside out, I mean, go around and just wipe off any excess because I don't want oozing glue. And the glue, I don't know if it does, but it may have a sheen to it that's gonna be different than this matte farmhousey board, this palette board. So I'm gonna make sure that my glue doesn't give it a sheen around the edges that I don't want, okay? So I just come around and wipe up any of the excess. So here's what we got so far. So, oh gosh, isn't she cute? So remember that was a cardstock paper from a paper stack and then my napkin from one of my bundles on top of it, okay? Oh, I love it, I love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. I need to hear from you guys though, seriously. But this one's a little busier. This one we could have done more embellishing, like I said, with like lace or flowers around her neck. Would you add any embellishments to this project as I'm putting the feet on? Why don't you comment? Because I love to hear from you guys about what you would add. If you would add something as an embellishment, what would you put? What would you put? Talk to me, girl. Tell me in the comments. I want to know. Okay. I'm going to check comments real quick, and then we're going to put some feet on here. It's so cute. <sighs> Donna says, I keep, I, I'm going to take a, I keep saying I'm going to take a break from buying and then you come up with a new stencil. This is not a new stencil. It has been around for a long time, actually. I'm just giving you a new take on the stencil. Okay, so here we go. We got to get our feet. So simple. We're going to lay this over. The positioning is perfect. I lay it over and then I can see where the feet are going to go. Now, I told you, this could be a paint-free project. Now, if you want to paint your little feet on orange. I don't know what color are chicken feet. I don't know. I think they're orangey. <laughs> I grew up in the city. I grew up in Boston, pretty much on concrete streets. Like, yes, I grew up on concrete in the concrete jungle. I don't know what color chicken's feet are. I'd have to Google it. This chicken's feet are blue. <laughs> you can paint them whatever color you want. Or you could use markers or you could use a, um, I was just thinking, you could use your distress ink. 
No? Should we try it? Let's use some distress ink. They'll be brown. But I don't know. What color are chicken's feet? Did somebody answer? Because I'm sure one of you know. Oh, some pearls around her neck. Yes. A raffia bow. I love these ideas. Keep them coming. Long stem rose along the side. Oh, that's a nice idea. Oh, a nest and have chicken laying in it. Oh, gosh, that's funny. That's a cute idea. A twin bow. Oh, a little, a little jute bow even around her neck would be super cute. Peggy says, cute, cute, cute. I love it. Yes, that board with that farm animal. They just go, right? They just go. <laughs> Deborah says, awesome, really adorable. <sighs> Very cute. Okay, did anybody tell me what color chicken's feet are? Because I don't know. Orangey yellow. Orangey yellow. They are full yellow, Mindy says. Ooh, jewels on her tail feathers. Who said that? Who said that? I love it. Oh, gosh, I can't see who said it. It went by so fast. Whoever said jewels on her tail feathers, I love it. Darn it, I missed it. Kind of brown. See, someone says brown. Someone says orangey. Let's just see. I want to, I thought it would be kind of fun to experiment and use, oh, excuse me, a distress ink. I'm going to check real quick and see if I have an orangey one. Okay, because I'm trusting y'all. Dirty orange feet, Carrie <laughs> says. Light yellow. Kathy's suggesting light yellow. Let me grab. Hold on, we're grabbing the inks. We're going to grab the bin with all that stuff in it. Let's see if I have a stamp pad or an ink. You can tell me yay or nay. That's, a, that's an ink pad. That's not a distress ink, but that's okay. Those aren't the right colors. Hot pink wouldn't be right, although we love that color. Sorry for all the banging. It is what it is, girls. It's hot mess city when you come over here. Here's an orange. I do have yellow, I do have orange, and I have some brown. I think we have it all covered. Let's put this aside. I'll try not to bang anymore. Oh, yeah. Good luck to you with that. Okay. Maybe we're just going to distress in some feet with, like, all the colors. Let me hear what you guys are saying. Yes, Julie says. <laughs> feet do color out of... What? Feet do color out of stock. Used. What? I don't know what that means, girl. Stephanie. Um, <laughs> yes, that yellow. Okay, so Idealist says, yes, that yellow. Yellow ink pad. Okay, we're going to go with the yellow and then we're going to muck it up with some dirt because Carrie said they usually have dirty yellow feet. <laughs> so here we go. I actually think maybe I should grab a new pad. No, yes, no. Or let's do this. Oh, I know I'm banging around so much, you guys, but I'm just so excited. Let's grab one of the stencil brushes. This is an essential stencil brush. It is super old, you guys. I've left it in water one too many times, and so the wood is even damaged on my handle. Don't do that. Don't ever leave your brushes in water for an extended amount of time. I think I was excited. I did a project. I went to bed, and I forgot to clean my brushes, and it got a little talk about mucked up. Okay, I'm gonna try this. I told you paint-free, let's do it. I don't know um, how wet this is gonna be, so what I'm gonna do before I put the feet on, let's just test this. If I go into my ink pad, picked up, this actually might be easier than paint because it's not gonna drip. Whenever I, I demonstrate stenciling with the brush, I always put the brush close up to the camera so you can see that it is dry brushing. It is not wet, glistening, drippy paint. It would be nearly impossible unless you just juiced up your ink pad to get wet, juicy, glistening. So maybe this will be easier. Let's try it. Um, I'm gonna take this. This is just a piece of that scrap watercolor paper and let's see what it does on here. It's gonna work, it's gonna work. Who's excited? Look at it. Look at it. We just discovered something. Discover. Explore with your, your stash. Use things differently. Think outside of the box. Challenge yourself, which reminds me, in the Craft Therapy Club, we're going to be doing a monthly challenge. We do a project together every month, but I'm adding a monthly challenge for prizes where I'm going to give you a theme every month. And the ladies, I'm just going to tell them, like, 
this month's challenge is, I don't know, a chicken with some napkins. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to come up with something um, on your own. And then I'm going to do my own project and show you it in the group. And it's about challenging you to think differently, build your confidence with using your supplies, explore your supplies. Um, this is an ink pad supposed to be used with rubber stamps. Well, I'm using it with a brush and a stencil. Why not? Okay, so look at it. It's going to be very light. It's not going to be really dark. Um, but you guys, it's really working. <laughs> it's I got some yellow feet. I'm going to muck it up with some brown. So let's put this aside. I think I'm just going to take my brush and offload as much of that yellow off of here onto the paper. And then I can grab my Distress Ink Pad and go in and grab some of that brown and let's muck up these feet a little so they're not so, they're not so perfect, right? Because we're all distressed and lumpy and grumpy and <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not calling you <laughs> distressed, lumpy, grumpy, and imperfect. Don't call me that. I think we're all imperfect. Hazel says, I love your awesome pep talks. Oh, I'm so glad, Hazel. I hope it inspires you to just, just have fun with your stuff. Don't take it too seriously. I don't know. I don't know if I should pound. I don't know how, like, I would assume, like, the feet are, like, really dirty on the nails, like, where they pick through the dirt. So I'm making this up as I go. I told you I'm a city girl. I don't know about chickens. <laughs> chickens are not my jam. I think they're super cute. So I'm just adding some brown, mucking it up a little bit here and there. I think I want the nails, though, to be a little more mucked up. So I'm going to come in on the nails and add another layer of muck up. I don't know why, because I would assume, whoop, just shift it on me. I would assume that's the dirtiest part. But what do I know? All right. <laughs> I'm just using little round mushing the bristles in. Let's just, I'm going to peek at this. It's great. Okay, listen, it needs something, but it's great. I'm going to show you. Look at how easy that was, girls. I'm going to put that aside. Look at how easy that was. Okay, but I think it does need something. I do think it needs something. I need to anchor this. It needs to be anchored onto this project. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. We're going to grab one of those markers that I have that are a permanent marker. Um, these are those pit pens. Let me see. This one's my brush, so that's what I want. I think this is drying out on me. So, but I and I, I don't know. I hope it's still. I'm gonna outline. Yes, I'm gonna outline the feet. Just, I'm just hand. Uh, look, I'm gonna get you closer in. Let me get you closer in. Holy, boob shot. <laughs> Sorry for that. I didn't mean to give you that. Alrighty, girls, you get more than you bargained for here. Look at, I'm just going to go and outline the feet to really anchor them so that they don't look like they're floating there by themselves. You know what I mean? I know. I'm sorry, girls. Someone's laughing. I saw some laugh emojis. I didn't mean to do that to you. So listen, I originally said you, if you wanted to really do a paint free project, you could use your markers. You see how easy this is? Another tip, we talk about this a lot over at the Comfy Nest in my membership groups. Make sure you're using an archival permanent marker because when you want to put your top coat on here, you don't want this smudging or moving on you at all. Okay, or if you have other layers of things that you want to do, you don't want it smudging or moving on you at all. So don't use a water-soluble pen or marker. Okay, that helps to anchor them a little bit. I'm thinking, and I would have to Google it, you guys, that there should be some details on here. I'm going to darken up the tips a little, these nails. I'm going to make them like more like talons, like a little more bold. Um, I do remember our friends have chickens and they had baby chicks and um, my kids were running around their place picking the chickens up and they wanted me to hold the darn thing. I'm like, I am not holding a chicken. I don't know why it is, but bird feet creep me out. I love birds, but they're little gnarly feet. <laughs> nope, I don't want to touch them. Okay, anchor the feet. I'm going to anchor the chicken. I'm going to anchor her. I'm going to, I'm going to outline all of her too. Even like here, I want that because she's on top, right? So we talk about placement of when you're, um, oh, I messed that up. When you're 
doing your projects, what's on top and what's underneath like layers. You want to make sure that you get your positioning right on your layers. But listen, I'm hitting the chicken. I'm hitting the board where I don't want to. And it's, it's when I hold this up, it's all good. Like it's not going to be something that you're going to criticize me on, I don't think. So we got all these little tiny points up here. This is going to make them all stand out and it really anchors the chicken onto the board so she doesn't look like she's just on top can you see the difference from where i anchored i outlined and where i didn't it's a big difference it almost looks like a shadow so it gives it a little depth right a little depth to the project they are scaly yes yes they remind me of like um they remind me of uh, what do you call them let me let me zoom out a little bit and I'll show you guys this close in a minute. They remind me of um, dinosaurs. Like they have that scaliness that like dinosaurs had. And I'm sure chickens have been around for a darn long time. I don't know if they've been around that long. But you can see I don't, I'm not getting too like particular here. <laughs> I'm just trying to anchor this so that it really gives it that depth and it looks like it's sitting on like on top of the board as opposed to part of the board. Part of the reason this is important too is because I have such, it's just watercolor paper. If I had used this, it has its own thickness and I probably would even anchor this too because I like the look of it. Um, but it might not be as necessary because it's got some texture and it's raised up on its own. It's already 3D. So let's do this. And then I have some pearls I just got at the, um, thrift store. I'm going to turn on my hot glue gun. I just got some pearls at the thrift store, a, a, like a spool of them. And um, if there are any of my craft crate people, um, you're getting some pearls in your, I, I had pearls on hand already. And then I used them in the craft crate and um, was running out. So I ended up at the thrift store and I'm like, oh my gosh, I found more pearls. So anyway, let me grab the pearls. You guys take a look at this. Tell me what you think. I'm going to leave this here. Let's do this so you can see it better. And let me see. Anita loves chickens. <laughs> my dad had a parrot name. I call my mine di Oh, Cindy says she calls her chickens dinosaurs all the time. Oh, that is so interesting. All right, where are the pearls I just got? Let me grab some lace. Oh, these pearls are not vintagey looking. That's the only thing. I got all kinds of stuff. They're not very vintagey looking, but let's look at what we got here. So embellishing her, we got raffia. That was a suggestion. Lace. We've got the pearls, but these ones are kind of, I think they were even, I think it even says something about wedding trim. It's crystal pearls. So they're a little bit iridescent, but how cute would that be to have pearls? So what do you vote? A little pearl around her neck? We could do a little, and what I think with the raffia, let's take out some raffia, because I think I would do a double bow, you guys. Someone said double bow. You know I love my double bows. When I'm using jute and I'm using raffia, I just love the look of a double bow. It just, first of all, I've tried to make multi-looped bows, and I'm not good at it. So <laughs> I just make two bows. <laughs> I just make two of them, and then I layer them on top of each other. That's what a double bow is. So let me... uh make a couple of little bows because that's another option is a lip double bow double raffia bow so we got that one and you guys my brother steven who is the oldest i'm i'm the 11th of 13 kids my brother steven was in college he graduated for college i think when i was five um he was in college i don't ever remember living with him but i do remember him he taught me how to tie my shoes and it was the double rabbit ears and i've i don't know how to tie my shoe any other way so thank you steven for taking care of me um <laughs> here we go two bows this is what it means to double bow you get two of them and all you do is you glue one on top of the other and again it gives it like more dimension so do you like the double bow raffia i think the lace might be too thick but i could always cut it down how about the lace and the double bow oh that could be cute hold on this is really the like super fun part right Super fun. This we could make dimensional too. I'm going to make it go out a little bit like she has a collar on. So I cut it so that it was angled. And if I glue this down, I don't want to, 
I don't know what that little thing that protrudes out is. I don't really necessarily want to hide that. But if I glue this down, but not this part, if I just glue the top down, you're going to have some of that going on. And then how about the double bow on top of that? Ah, she's so cute. She's so cute. Just the lace. Just the lace. Someone said double bow with some pearl and lace. Susan, I'm with you. I love the double bow. Irene says, yay. The raffia bows. I love the twine bow. I love the twine bows too. I do, I do, I do. Sue says, so stinking cute, Miss Grace. Can never go wrong with pearls. Now listen, could we work in a bit of pearl in here? Could we, could we? Let's just see. I, if I grabbed the other pearls that are going in the craft crate, they're in my office though, because I'm just getting ready to do some more packaging with that. So I, they're not here. They are like the cream colored ones. They would match way better. I, these ones just don't match girls. I can't do it. It just goes against my, it looks, it's not, they're not vintagey enough. They're too glitzy glam. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. I don't want to burn my fingers and the, the glue is going to, whoa, it's going to go right through the lace. So I use my little chocotour silicone tool, my little, um, my, uh, applicator for chocotour. I use that and that's what I use to push my stuff down because I don't want my finger. It doesn't ever stick to the silicone. It never sticks and it comes right. I mean, it, it will stick just for a minute, but then you can just pull it right off. So look at it's down. We got this little flap of lace and then let's put these double bows down and then we'll cut them to the right size. The, the, um, the little tails, we'll cut them to the right size. So this is the smaller one. So that one will go in the front so all and you just need a just a tish in fact i'm not even going to put it on the raffia i'm going to put it on the chicken and i'm going to push the knot of the bow into that little bead of glue and then i'm going to do the same thing again right on top of that knot from the the raffia bow that's underneath we are going to put the second bow. And so you're getting two bows and you're getting two tails, two sets of tails. Okay, and you can cut the tails down to whatever size you want. Okay, what do we think? Just enough, right? Just enough. You guys, is this not precious or what? I'm loving it. I'm so in love with this, you guys. Let me show you one more time. This is the set, the stencil set that we used. Here, it's underneath here. It's called Farmhouse, it's all smudged. Farmhouse sign stencil set. And these are all the things you get. They're 12 by 12. Um, the napkins, you can go to my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com for the napkins if you want any. Um, so this is... One idea that I gave you, I'm trying to give you guys more ideas of ways that you can use your stencils without paint. That's been my goal really lately um, because we have such bright, smart, creative brand ambassadors and you're getting all kinds of ideas from everybody on the myriad of ways that you guys can use these, but they're incredibly, they've got great quality. Use my code to get your discount. That also supports my business. So thank you for doing that. Um, get your discount, join the stencil of the month club. If you'd like exclusive designs that others can't get, it's more an exclusive. Um, and if you want to be a member of that group, the private group on Facebook, I want to show you another design that I did with a napkin and a, an essential stencil. Another way to use your napkins to jazz up your stencil projects. Okay. So I did this one a long while ago. Some of you probably watched me do it. Um, but this is another one of my floral napkins. It's the same one. It's the same napkin. And I used it to decorate the board around my phrase. So if you're not using napkins yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> if you're not getting your stencils all set up so that you can, you know, if you're not finding the right designs, I don't know what you're waiting for. The bigger designs are easier for the cutouts. I will say that. So if you're looking through stencils and you want to do some cutout projects, the bigger designs are easier. When they have really intricate designs, it's it's going to be harder to do. I don't know about impossible, but I'm I'm not a um I'm impatient and kind of messy and not real um fussy. So 
I kind of like the easier projects. <laughs> I hope you love this, you guys. All right, let's see who our winners are. Today, it's Miss Jennifer Russo. Hey, hey, crafty chick. Tina Tagle and Jen Fries or Freeze. The three of you just want a set of stencils. Oh, wait, there should be a fourth one. Mindy Hoots, bonus winner. We got Mindy Hootsel. It's Mindy Hootsel is our bonus winner today. So that's our fourth person. And then we had Jen, Tina, and Jennifer. Your names are showing in the pinned post. Those of you who won, if you're not sure, if you were walking away and you thought you heard Jennifer, is it the right Jennifer? Jennifer Russo, you just won. Check the pinned post and all of you, make sure you just message Essential Stencil at the email that they shared there with you so that you can get your stencils. Give them your mailing address, your email address, so that they can send them through to you. You guys, thank you, thank you for your attention. Thanks for your support. I'm so happy to be back with you. Go order some stencils. Use my code, The Comfy Nest, to get a discount. And I'll catch you next week. Um, if you don't want that much time to go by between now and Thursday before we hang out again, head on over to my YouTube channel or join my free community here on Facebook. is called The Comfy Nest Crafty Chicks Club. Go find me there. Take care. Bye.